so welcome back to the part 3 of this class uh, we were supposed to take a lot of uh, uh, topics which were not complete in last class so we'll take it up in today's class the first thing that we are going to talk about is what we call a dugwell latrine now if you remember if i just go back a bit of the slides it was this, this borehole latrine that we had talked about in yesterday's class or last class in today's class we'll start from the dugwell latrine so what is a dugwell latrine it is a circular pit about 75 cm in diameter and about 3 to 3 and a half meter deep which may be lined with pottery rings to prevent the caving in of the soil so that the soil from the sides does not cave in uh, a concent a concrete squatting plate is placed on top of the pit and the latrine is enclosed with a super structure so that the smell cannot come out and the flies cannot go in this pit will last for 5 years for a family of 4 to 5 person so that means this one is particularly suitable for a small family and once the pit is filled up a new pit is constructed uh, the action of the dugwell latrine is same as that of the borehole latrine that is an aerobic digestion this is how a dug a borehole sorry dugwell latrine looks like if you can see this is the squatting plate the person is sitting on top of it stuffs are supposed to fall down from here and get accumulated you have a footrest over here tight fitted lid which we have to put down once the job is done what happens over here that the liquid percolate on the into the soil and the so, uh, solid residue will decompose and get accumulated in the bottom area so this pit should be at least 2 meter deep and 1 to 1 and 1/2 meter round or square the pit lining extends at least 1 meter below the ground level and latrine slab of wood or concrete of at least 0.15 meter above the ground level with a hole preferably covered when not in use so the gas will come out from here and this is the air vent that we have kept so the gas can escape what are the advantages of this system it is easy to construct and no special equipment is required to dig the hit the uh, it's not hit that will be pit the pit has a longer life than borehole latrine because of the greater capacity now the third one is a water seal latrine you must have seen this in your house uh there are two type the pra type involving p for planning r for research a for action institute lucknow and the rca type which was designed by research come action projects in environmental sanitation by ministry of health what are the two important functions of a water seal a it prevents access by the flies and b it prevents escape of odor and foul smell gases and thereby eliminates the nuisance from the smell so if you can remember in the last two pictures what we have seen is that there is a hole we put a lid on top of it but when you are using the smell from below the hole is going to come up and is going to give us very stenching smell so in this particular case there will be no odor and also why we had to cover the lid so that the flies cannot get inside so in this water seal part it is automatic that neither the odor will come out nor the flies will be able to enter into the dirty area and once the latrine is flushed night soil is no longer visible that is what you see in your house now let's talk about the design of an rca latrine this is very important for you from a question point of view short notes the rca latrine comprises of a squatting plate made of a impervious material like cement concrete this is easy to clean and maintain raised foot steps are included in the squatting plate there is a pan directly underneath the squatting plate and the pan receives the night soil and the pan is connected to the trap which is a bent pipe let's look at it once acha before <laughs> this essentials of the rc latrine most important the location has to be proper squatting plate has to be present pan has to be present trap has to be present connecting pipes has to be present dugwell is needs to be there superstructure and maintenance these are the essential features of this rca latrine now if you can look at the picture over here this is how a rca latrine looks like the trap this this is basically the water trap this bent part if you can see at every house in the uh, pot, uh, toilet there is outer pipe like this and there will be a bent part 
and then it will be flushed out right this particular area is what we call the trap you can see over here this is the trap then there has to be a water seal my picture is not perfect but it's just for representation purpose the depth of the water seal has to be uh, at least 2 cm or 20 mm the trap holds the water and serves as a water seal so it will automatically act as a barrier and it is connected to the pit through a connecting pipe and when the pit fills up another one can be dug dug up and the pipe may be accordingly shifted so you do not need to shift the potty area itself you just need to shift the place where it is getting accumulated once you shift you just need to connect the pipe accordingly so that it goes to the different collection area this pit can also be made directly underneath the pan which happens in many of the rural houses these days an appropriate superstructure can be made accordingly so this is the collecting pan it will drop down from here this is the water seal once you flush these things are going to pass over here once it reaches this top level it cannot come back until unless the flush is from the other side so that's what happened once you get that flush done it just goes out and you do not see it again it is easy to maintain this latrine and the latrine in hand is hand flushed by pouring one or two liters of water every time the latrine is used the squatting plate should also be washed clean every day water seal prevents access to flies and avoids release of the odor now comes to another important topic called the septic tank every household in urban area has this septic tank in their houses it is an ideal system for hygienic final disposal of the excreta in absence of a central sewerage system excreta from many pore flush latrine can be discharged into a septic tank just before i go into the details i just want to tell you something what happens is that in a, in your house also you can <coughs> you can uh, go and check if you have time it's a big tank where your house might be having one two three uh, latrines or if you're staying in an apartment n number of latrines will be there in that apartment if you accumulate all and all of those things are getting deposited in a particular tank if you remember the earlier two <coughs> what happens over there is that once it is filled up you need to dig another hole and shift the connecting pipes but in the urban area in the city areas land available is very limited so what you do you have to work with whatever area you have so you cannot you don't have the option of shifting the tanks so that's why septic tank is an ideal concept where it gets automatically digested and gets uh, the uh, the the, uh, the latrine that is accumulated throughout the day will be digested in that tank itself you don't need to change it once it fills up you just need to contact the municipality they will come they will clean it up they will uh, empty the tanks <coughs> a bit of treatment is done and again it is ready for use designed to collect and treat excreta and toilet wastewater use is likely to be appropriate where volume of water waste produces too large for disposal in pit latrines <coughs> and water borne sewerage is uneconomical or unaffordable particularly suited to the system involving high water use especially where water is used for flushing and anal cleansing difficult to manage very large population <coughs> best suited to single household or a group of household or institutions such as hospitals or schools efficiency of a septic tank system is inferior to the sewage works but is much cheaper quicker and easier to provide and maintain than sewage works <coughs> so, now let's come to the design and construction of a septic tank it consists of an underground concrete tank usually double chambered the latrine should be preferably be grouped together with one or more tanks placed close to one, a group the sewer leading from the latrines to the tank should be should have manholes at every 100 meter and at every change of directions and two or more medium sized tanks arranged in a parallel instead of one large tank are preferable facilitating removal of sludge without disturbing the functioning of the system so you do not need a large tank you need to put a chambers over there two or three chambers will be sufficient to get this job done now 
the capacity of the tank is around 20 to 30 gallons per user with a minimum size of 3 meter by 3 meter which will accumulate around 500 gallons. It is 1.5 to 2 meter deep, minimum air space of 30 centimeter above the liquid level is required. The septic tank is covered by a concrete slab with a manhole. The aeration chamber should be ventilated and the inlet and out exit pipes of the tank should be trapped. The effluent may be disposed into a soak well. So this is how a septic tank looks like. The length is around 3 meters. Okay. And this will be around 1.5 to 2 meters deep. Here you have the inlet which will go on go inside the tank the sludge will be deposited this is the clear liquid zone this clear water will again come uh, come and get collected over here and from this pipe it will go to the outer sewer area right and these are the access covers placed at every 100 meters there's also another pipe which is not mentioned in this particular um, picture with which from which the air the air can come out from the septic tank this again another picture of a septic tank. You need to know this term of scum, baffle, effluent, uh, sludge, etc. Now the functioning. The septic tank functions by the biological process of anaerobic and aerobic digestion both. That is single versus double, cha uh, double chambered septic tank. The crude sewage on the entry to anaerobic chamber allowed to be stand, allowed to stand for two to three days and is acted upon by in anaerobic microorganisms. <coughs> a partially digested colloidal solution is formed, and the complete oxidation and mineralization of the colloidal matter is carried out by the aerobic microorganisms in the aerobic chamber. The effluent loss mo mo uh, loses most of its offensive smell over there. And the minerals are absorbed by the soil from the soil by the plants. If you, if you have ever seen construction of a septic tank, what happens is that once the con, uh, tank is dug up, it is filled with water and kept idle for seven to fourteen days. Why? So that the algae can be formed, and these algae are the one that helps to do this anaerobic digestion. Over here, the plants means basically those anaerobic algae. The operation and maintenance of a septic tank is very simple. And to commission a septic tank, it has to be first filled with water and then seeded with a bucket full of sludge from another tank. Not less than 25 liter of water per day per user must enter the tank and the use of soap water and chemicals should be avoided. Sludge from the tank to be bailed out once in a year or two and the routine inspection is necessary to check whether desludging is needed and to ensure that there is no blockage in the inlet or outlet. A simple rule is to desludge when solid, solids occupy between one half and two third of the total depth between the water level and the bottom of the water tank. Now there is another term called the communal aqua privy. Uh, this is basically a latrine which is constructed above a septic tank directly. So, whatever you do upstairs is going to directly come and get deposited downstairs. It is appropriate where pit latrines are unacceptable. The amount of water required for flushing is much smaller than for a septic tank due to the location of the tank. And it helps to exclude odor from the superstructure, not more than four families per latrine. So, this is how an aqua preview looks like. This is the septic tank. This is the squatting potty. Just directly go downstairs. That's it. As simple as that. The rest of the function downstairs is the same as that of a septic tank. <coughs> what are the advantages? Reduces odor. Ideal where water is used for anal cleansing. Easy to clean. Cannot be blocked with bulky anal cleaning material. Nil problem with odors of flies can be connected to a sewerage system at a later date. Constraints, what are the constraints? Increased quantity of water is required and solid anal cleansing material may cause blockages. More expensive and difficult to construct than a simple pit latrine. 
what are the disadvantages it is expensive to build aqua privy ones the need large volume of water to work water seal may be hard to maintain and tanks must be emptied about every 3 years so this is again aqua privy and septic tanks i'll move forward now comes to a very important topic of sulab sochalaya you must have heard about the sulab sochalaya is everywhere in the uh, in india it was a concept that was uh, introduced by dr b dubey oh before i go into the details of this topic i just let you know sulab sochalaya is very important from mcq and short note point of view so you need to read it a bit he modified the standard hand flush latrine to suit the rural indian community it consists of a specially designed pan and a water seal trap it is connected to a pit of 3 by 3 by 3 meter minimal water is needed in the process the excreta gets decomposed to manure in the pit and this provides clean and sanitary toilet to the users at minimal cost and these are also maintained by the sulab international society now chemical toilets what are chemical toilets these are sanitation units that consist of a squatting pan placed above a water tight excreta holding tank which usually contains a chemical solution like formaldehyde to aid digestion and reduce the odor this is contained in a single prefabricated plastic unit with a lockable door and these can be adopted as temporary solution where pit latrines or septic tanks are unsuitable or unacceptable as in aircraft or in trains and initial charge of chemical is adequate for 40 to 160 uses what are the uses of this chemical pits these are used in aircrafts and as short term measure in case of disasters it is advantage that it is portable hygienic minimal odor and can be mobilized rapidly constraints are the high cost unsustainability for long period regular servicing and emptying is required after 40 to 160 uses then you have the water carried system these are useful for large and residential places and the commercial places human excreta and waste water are carried by a network of underground pipe called sewers to an ultimate disposal site used for the first time in calcutta in 1867 but even today unfortunately not more than 20% of the urban area can boast of this method of sewage disposal laying down such a system is infrastructure and capital intensive Uh, it amounts to digging up lane and by lanes skilled manpower is a must to establish the system and piped water supply is mandatory to run the system ongoing maintenance has to be done to keep the pipes going an ideal system of sewage disposal in large cities then you come what do you call a green toilet you must have seen this green toilets in the train before the corona hit you it is research design and standard organization rdso which had developed this toilet a green toilet may be defined as a toilet system which discharges effluent according to the environmental norms and the system is also known as environmental friendly toilet system efts that is also important for uh, small short notes the green toilet aim at zero defecation on the ground and will improve level of cleanliness at station reduce corrosion of rails and rail fittings and consumption of water this will ensure better cleanliness and hygiene of the coaches indian railway are developing two types of efts the bio toilet one and the zero discharge system the bio toilet is where human waste is converted into liquid and gases and the gases get mixed with air and the liquid is discharged on the tracks and the zero discharge system is that solid and liquid waste is separated by using a special type of solid liquid separator and the liquid is recycled after proper treatment and the waste is converted into manure which is a very difficult job this is much more easier for a indian system so i believe we come to an end of today's class with this section uh third part is also left which i'll take in next class so till then have fun and stay safe bye bye